Hello. In this video, we're going to have a look at the concept of relevant cash flows and see how this applies to another investment appraisal technique, payback period. When we're making a decision about whether or not to invest, the amount to include in the appraisal should be future incremental cash. The reason for this is as follows. Firstly, let's consider the significance of the word future. When we're making decisions, we're concerned about how that decision will affect the future. Anything that happened in the past cannot be changed, so should not be considered further in the decision itself. For example, suppose I commission an investigation into a project, and that investigation costs me $1 million. When I read the report, it says, if you invest $1,000 today, you'll get $2,000 back tomorrow. Am I upset that I've paid $1 million for this advice? You bet I am. But does that mean I don't invest $1,000 today to get $2,000 back tomorrow? I can't change the fact the report has cost me a $1 million, so the cost of the report is irrelevant to the decision. The only decision we face is whether or not to invest $1,000 today to get $2,000 back tomorrow. 100% return in 24 hours sounds pretty good to me. Next, let's consider the significance of the word incremental. We're only interested in understanding how a decision will change the future. Financial accountants often struggle with this concept. For example, if you are paid $50,000 a year and your manager says to you, I need you to work on this project for a year, it will take up one day of your five-day week each week. When you're considering the relevant cost of your time, it's very tempting to say something like $50,000 divided by five equals $10,000. So $10,000 is the relevant cost of my time on this project. However, in actual fact, you were paid $50,000 before and you continue to be paid $50,000. So the incremental cost of your time is zero. Opportunity costs and benefits are also relevant. Suppose we have some material in the warehouse that we bought for a project a while ago that didn't go ahead. Suppose it cost $1,000 to buy and we have no further use for this material other than for a project we're considering. If we don't get on with the project, we could sell the material for scrap for $100. Let's consider the relevant cost of using this material on the project. Firstly, the $1,000 is irrelevant, as it's a historical cost and therefore sunk. If we don't go ahead with the project, we could sell this material for $100. So if we do go ahead, we'll be choosing to forego $100 income. In effect, using the material on the project has cost us $100, as we're $100 worse off as a result of going ahead. Finally, let's consider the significance of the word cash. In short, you can't spend profits. We make shareholders wealthier by giving them cash. So, when the company spends cash, it is at that point that it has cost the shareholder as we can no longer give it to them. Equally, when cash flows into the business, this makes shareholders wealthier. Hence, we focus on cash flows. A good mental image to maintain when trying to decide on the size and relevance of a future incremental cash flow is as follows. Imagine a cash flow forecast of the business if you don't go ahead with the decision you are considering. And then, next to it, imagine a cash flow forecast of the business if you do go ahead with the decision. Anywhere there's a difference between those two cash flow forecasts and the size of that difference is the relevant cash flow. In the previous video, we introduced the idea of accounting rate of return as a method for appraising a potential investment opportunity. Let's now have a look at the second non-discounting technique, payback period. The payback period for a project is the time it takes to recover its initial investment. 
It's the time it takes for the project to pay for itself. Let me remind you about the example we looked at in the previous video. A potential project involves an initial investment in machinery of $1.7 million and has these operating annual cash inflows. Year 1, $300,000. Year 2, $550,000. Year 3, $600,000. And Year 4, $440,000. The machinery will be sold for scrap at the end of year four for $200,000. Key to calculating payback period is to calculate a cumulative cash flow column over time as follows. The scrap proceeds from selling the machinery are only received right at the end of the project, at the end of year four. The project pays for itself before the scrap proceeds are received Hence, we don't need to include them in this analysis. The project pays for itself in the final year. At the start of that final year, the project still owes us $250,000. During that final year, $440,000 flows in over the year. Assuming that money flows in evenly, we could work out how far into that year we have to go in order to reach payback. We would need to go 250,000 over 440,000 or 57% of the way through that year. In other words, 57% times 12 months equals 6.8 months into that year. The payback period is therefore 3 years and 6.8 months. In order to decide whether or not to proceed, the payback period calculated needs to be compared to some relatively arbitrary benchmark. For example, the company may say, we only accept projects that pay back within three years, in which case we'd reject this project as it takes longer than three years to pay back. Payback period has several advantages as an investment appraisal technique. It's cash flow based as opposed to accounting rate of return, which is based on accounting profits. Accounting profits can be manipulated and cash flow more directly relates to the fundamental objective of maximizing shareholder wealth. It also gives the decision maker a feel for how risky the project is. A project that pays back quickly is likely to be less risky as the near future is simply more knowable than the distant future. Payback period is also useful if the company is facing cash flow difficulties as it shows how long the project has to be financed for. However, payback period also has several disadvantages. It takes no account of the time value of money. More on this later. And it ignores all cash flows after the payback period has been reached. For example, a project may have a really fast payback, but then soon after the payback period has been reached, there could be an enormous outflow to decommission the site. Overall, the project could be very poor in terms of its financial performance, even though it has paid back quickly. In this video, we've considered how to identify the relevant cash flows in an investment appraisal decision that is cash flow based. We use the three line test of future incremental cash flow. We've also considered a second investment appraisal technique, payback period, its calculation, advantages and disadvantages. In our next video, we turn our attention to the time value of money.